Well, how'll do there, chums, as you can probably tell. I got a new background. Yes, light, no, fire. Why have I got a new background? Well, <laughs> Sean Murray has only just got to let loose his new IP on the world. Yes, he's told us all what his new intellectual property is. The new game they've been working on for the last umpteen years. I've got myself a copy to hand, people. It's not a cup of tea. I need the harder stuff, people, because I was up till four in the morning watching the Game Awards. Oh, my God, I was watching Jason plays and his reaction. You've got to go see it. I put a link to his reaction over there. Go hit that one up. But anyways, people, let's jump on over to the Tinter web and I'll show you what I've got, people, inside the view of us. Let's get this up and running. I'll just get an image there for my background. Yes, we're going to be covering the Steam page because it's got lots of information on it. But let's dive in where this all started late last night, people. People inside the view of us. That right there was No Man's Sky, a game we announced 10 years ago with this guy right here, Sean Murray. Sean, uh, looks like the content keeps rolling in 2024. But what does the next decade look like for Hello Games? Well, to start with, uh, next year is going to be a really big year for No Man's Sky. Like you said, I've been working on it for 10 years now. And I still really love it, still really enjoy it. But what people don't know is that for the last five years, we've been working on something new. Oh, uh, another game? Yeah, something very different, something maybe more ambitious. Um, you know, for... Uh... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit about it, Sean. Uh, well, for No Man's Sky, we generated a whole universe of kind of sparse, alien-looking planets. And that wasn't easy, you know, it was hard, but there is something that's much harder that we wanted to do. Uh, for our new game, we wanted to create an Earth, um, you know, something as varied, a planet that is as varied as a universe, something bigger than Earth, something with, you know, mountains, real mountains, not video game mountains, but mountains that are miles high taller than Everest, that when you climb to the top of them and look out, you can see rivers and canyons and continents. You know, you can see oceans. So it's just like an open world planet kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, the first real open world, right? Something without boundaries. Uh, and we're going to let everyone play in it together. It's, you know, a place where people can live out their sort of adventures together. Well, we can't wait to uh, take a look at it. We, we have anything tonight or future? Or... <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so we have a trailer. Oh. Um, and, you know, it's quite a small team that's working on us. Yeah. There's about a dozen of us. We're actually, everyone's here. The, the, everyone from the team is here. Uh, we're... S uh, we're very excited to share this. You and I have been talking about this one for years. Yeah, we're, we're super nervous, you know, but uh, really excited if... You know, if people like it, this is a game I would like to still be updating 10 years from now. All right, so Game Awards 2033. <laughs> we'll be back. But no, uh, let's take a look. This is such an incredible project, and I'm honored that we get to show it off. Should we, should we do it, Sean? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go.
On my days, on my days. Is there a date? There's no date, there's no commitment there, is there at the moment? But oh, we'll look at the Steam page in a second, people. Wow! Oh, sorry, Barry. People. Um, it would appear Jeff Keeley chimes in with a little bit afterwards. Let's see what he has to say. Remember, that comes from an independent team. Absolutely incredible. I've been waiting for years to show that to you. And uh, again, created by the team at Hello Games. So uh, very, very exciting. And I'm excited to uh, see games like that that show kind of the next decade of where games are going to and hopefully TGA too. All right. Okay, John, now, well, I've about... now put the footage in very slow mo and we're going to play it back and I'm going to pause it. I'm going to dissect this. So first of all, look at the distance draw on this. I mean, I can see like a little mini encampment down here. I can see boats in the water. So just like you can traverse the world on boats by the looks of things. There's something that was quite interesting down there. There's like deciduous trees. Oh, there's some deciduous looking trees there. Anyway, let's hit play and let's just move on. I mean, then again, look at these races. You've got a chap here with horns and a little bunny man. Oh, you probably saw me go like that during the freak. Last night when I was watching this trailer, it was like four in the morning and I could barely keep my eyes open. So this is what you just saw when I was watching that trailer is my reactions. I didn't have my mic on, so, you know, you can take it all in. But here we go. Let's hit play. Very cool. Very nice. Lots of birds over here as well. Very cool. A multiplayer Earth. So yeah, where Sean says that this planet is as diverse and as interesting and as much in as variety as a universe, I think he means No Man's Sky's universe inside of here. So expect multiple biomes and places that almost feel like another planet on a planet. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is completely different to what we just saw. The transition from one to the other is like night and day. And look, there's little skeletons, little, like cat people running around. They've got little horns on their head. Freaking awesome. What was all that about? Because I look like a player model. And the thing in the background there almost looks like a colossal archive. I put up a video the other day about Bo Lam's artwork. If you look at Bo Lam's artwork, then look at this. It's pretty much mirrored. Yeah, hit up that video over there. What I'm noticing here under the water is there's a sunken pirate galleon. But not only that, look to the side of it. There's a freaking giant octopus creature. It moves in a moment. I didn't spot it straight away. Look at that. It's freaking great. I'm loving all the fish as well. What I did notice as it was panning here, though, it went almost from like 60 frames per second to like, you know, 30 or something. It was very sort of staggered. They look like little neons in there, I don't know, the little tetra neons you can get at your local garden centre or pet store or whatever. The underwater areas here look very No Man's Sky-esque, and I'd say a lot of the visual elements here look pretty No Man's Sky-esque. I mean, it's, they haven't gone for realism, but I love that about No Man's Sky's... Well, Hello Games is games. I like that about No Man's Sky, and I love that about The Last Campfire. It has this whimsical, interesting feel to it. I mean, look at that! Oh my days, the reveal of the world when you get down to this level. You can see all the foliage. But there's a little creature running amongst the foliage there. A dragon flying over loft. The trees are all moving, all wavy-davy-like. And then there's some flashes. It looks like we've got gliders. We've got giant pigeons we can ride. And there was a floating cube there as well. There's a lot to digest inside of this trailer, people. I'd, I'd imagine a lot of content creators are going to be diving in and dissecting this all the time. I can see two players there. I can see another one over there building that base like a little rabbit dude. And I can see another one standing on top of a building there. There's one cutting down a tree, one carrying a massive log. And he looks like he's some sort of otter man. What the flying fudge? Now, if this is resource hungry and you're going to spend the time whacking a tree for like about 50 whacks or something, then that could be a little bit time consuming. It depends. If you fill one tree and you can build pretty much half of this house, that would be freaking great. But if you've got to fell one tree to build a freaking staircase, yeah, and then you've got to fell the tree by hitting it like 50 times. I don't know how much fun that's going to be to watch live, but hopefully No Man's Sky get the balance right. I mean No Man's Sky, Hello Games get the balance right. If I say No Man's Sky, I'm probably meaning Hello Games. This is a freaking phenomenon. Can you tell how excited I am? I haven't felt this excited since I saw the um, pr the pre-trailers to No Man's Sky. There was a giant crab there and they were all doing battle with it with, with bows and stuff. Look at these dragons, they're like Falcor from freaking never ending story i might have to run through this trailer a couple of times to see everything people there's just so much to take in it's a feast for the eye peepers it's over peeper overload it really is 
Okay, I'm getting all my words combobulated. I'm that excited, people. Oh my days, look at that mountain piece. There seems to be a, a some sort of structure on top of the mountain. There's another structure out in the water. Half of it is sunken. And there's a little hut there. There's boats in the water, so it looks like they're traversing out there, little mini rafts. And they look slightly different from one another. So are they player built rafts? Do you have to build your own raft? Or is there a set raft in a blueprint system? Who knows, people? There's so many questions that I've got about this game. And look at the different types of dragon. Even the different types of dragon. There's different colour dragon, different types of wings. How many types of dragon are in this game? Again, more questions than I've got answers to. I've seen a little kingfisher bird. I've seen a pigeon looking bird. I've seen a sparrow looking bird. How many types of bird are there? You know, when Shaun of the Murrays said that this is like a universe compressed into a planet, maybe a No Man's Sky universe compressed into a planet, and you've got like 70 odd biomes in No Man's Sky, squashing all of those onto one planet, this is going to be freaking epic. You know, maybe you could go out and find your own little mini slice of paradise, your own little mini island. That'd be freaking lovely, wouldn't it? That'd be lovely. I don't know how many players are supposedly being able to join a singular instance. I do know that inside of No Man's Sky we have some problems. It does say 32 player lobbies, but I seem to be able to get up to about 12 or 14, then this sort of caps out. But 12 or 14 in a sort of area, that, that'd kind of work, because I'd imagine there's going to be different server instances. Holy fudge! What the fudge is that? I mean, I, the, my jaw dropped when I saw this thing in full speed. But look at it. It looks like it's got one of the knowledge stones carved into its freaking face, mate. Holy mackerel, as it lifts, all that sort of... Is that water running down it? It could be. It looks all shiny, shiny which is the stuff that they had into No Man's Sky not too long ago. Some of these plants and some of the flora on here look quite alien. It's definitely not Earth. It's a planet like Earth. And is it bigger than Earth? It looks like there was some sack venom just laying about there that we've seen in No Man's Sky. So maybe there's going to be subtle nods to No Man's Sky, like the Knowledge Stone, like the Sack of Venom, like some of the flora that we see. Oh, the rabbit people! This is where I was going about that. I got a little rabbit people. Reminds me of that um, ninja rabbit from freaking Turtles. Yo Soggy, Yo Jimbo. Heck yes, I'm probably going to be jumping around as a little rabbit man. Heck yes, Captain Steve, rabbit man, rabbit man. I don't know, actually. I don't know what I'm going to play as. I mean, that guy in front of me looks like a badger. and There's a little mole man there as well. Maybe there's all different types of weird sort of faunery creatures that we can be in different races inside of this game. Look at that dragon. It's got yellow banding on it. That one looks cool as well. Holy fudge and ori. People, this game looks freaking sublime. And there's another one of those structures with the balls on the top. We saw one that looked like that earlier, but it was different. But it does look just like Bo Lam's artwork for his fantasy style type stuff that I hit up in the video the other day. And this is where we're drawing to a close now. Now, if it, if it, is it just me? Or, at the end of this, you're going to have to watch the original to hear the actual sound effect. But it almost feels like the same sort of vibrational tone or note that we got when we see the Atlas, you know? And it does look like the atlas with those prongs going up. It almost looks like it's forming the base of the atlas. And that big red orb is kind of like the centerpiece for the atlas. So is this like the pre-modeled world for No Man's Sky? Maybe the simulation has moved on. Or maybe this is the next iteration, a more peaceful approach to the universe. Or living on one universe-sized planet. Maybe this is just a different iteration of the Atlas. I suppose once we reach this structure, because it must be in the game somewhere, perhaps we get the answers to that riddle, people. Who freaking knows? But it looks freaking lovely. It looks like another sandboxy type game. We we'll jump over to the Steam page. We'll take a look over on Steam and see what it actually says in the developer's notes. After all, that's what Shaun of the Murrays and Hello Games have actually crafted. So let's go do that. Okay, people, well, I'm over on a Light No Fire Steam page. Yes, a game about adventure building, survival and exploration together sat on a fantasy, set on a fantasy planet the size of Earth. Okay, can I read more? Can I read more? I want to read more. Here we go. About this game. All right, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we can get that a bit bigger on screen, people. I'm not the best reader in the world. I, I do have dyslexia, people. So we'll, we'll see how we get on with this. And um, we'll see how we do in one hit. Okay, about this game. Light No Fire is a game about adventure. Building survival and exploration together. Cool. 
set on a fantasy planet the size of Earth. The size of Earth. Okay, cool. It brings the depth of a role-playing game to the freedom of a survival sandbox. I hope it's got a lot of RPG elements into it. I really do. And I hope that there's some RPG elegant elements that they can lift from this and maybe bring into No Man's Sky and continue developing No Man's Sky. Until this drops and until I play it and get a sense of it, I don't know whether it's something that's going to be the number one game on my channel or whether it's going to be a side game to No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is still my it's still my game that I dreamed of when I was a kid. But this is freaking amazing. A multiplayer Earth. Carve a life together. Meet players from across the globe. Build a life. Explore and survive together. Construct a persistent buildings and communities. Lovely. Or strike out alone to discover the world of, for others. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So yeah, you, you can play together or just go solo. A procedural Earth. A truly open world with no boundaries, at a scale never attempted before. No loading screens, Bethesda. Ha! A massively varied and dense planet filled with the Im Im immersive biomes, unique enemies and valuable resources to discover. Freaking awesome. A fancy earth, light no fire, presents you with an ancient earth to uncover. Very nice. One way you're not the hero. Thick with lore, mystery, and a constant fight for survival. Like it. Inspired by the adventures, charm, and the imagination that we love from classic fantasy. Great. It still looks very Foss-like, doesn't it? It's very bright. Very awesome. An unexplored earth. Every mountain can be climbed, and below them lie endless vistas. Oceans and continents perhaps no other have seen. Who will climb the tallest mountains? Who will find the deepest sea? Set sail across the vast oceans and rivers. Ride wild beasts through fantastical landscapes. Fly dragons over undiscovered landscapes. All my days just take my freaking money, people. Now, what I would say is when they launched No Man's Sky, they launched the Collector's Edition, which was a box with the ship in it and all that sort of shenanigans. Now it costs a frickin' earth to get one of those things. I've got one, thank fudge. Yeah, I managed to find it. But I paid an arm and a leg for it. So, whatever they put out there, because I know that I'm going to be ploughing loads of hours into this game, because I love Hello Games' games and the worlds they create and the sandboxy element to it, where you just make your own adventure, I am, I am definitely, definitely going to be fully invested in buying the biggest, bestest, option available on this one people because yeah i learned my lesson from the no man's sky plight i put myself in okay people so this one is definitely going on my wish list and like i say as soon as i can pre-order it and i can go for the collector's edition i'm going for the full bells and whistles on this one people and i know you shouldn't pre-order stuff but sod it you know I, I wasn't let down by No Man's Sky, even with its rocky launch. I was no way of getting a refund on my No Man's Sky. I really loved it. So yeah, I'm, go I'm going all in on this one, people. This one has definitely, definitely captured my interest. I mean, from the whole of the awards ceremony, I'm not just saying it because I like Hello Games and I like No Man's Sky. This, for me, was the whole freaking show. This was by far the biggest announcement for me personally i mean sound up in the comments let me know if you think something beat this let me know if something has topped this on your excitement level i my excitement level hasn't been this high for a game since no man's sky okay uh just putting it out there i mean yeah when i first saw starfield i was like oh my god this this looks great it nearly came close to how i felt when i first saw no man's sky this is equal to how i felt about no man's sky and I, I really can't wait to jump in. And like I was saying the other day about um, Bo Lamb's artwork, I put a little bit of Bo Lamb's artwork over there. So you can take a quick look at the Bo Lamb's artwork. I'm wondering whether some of these things that you're seeing on the screen right here might actually be inside of this. I mean, this, this looks like it's pretty darn freaking big. Oh, look at all the leaves falling off the trees there. Every single time I watch it, I spot something new. So even if we don't get a big update to No Man's Sky this year or even early part of next year, I think we've got enough of this to keep us talking for a little while, people. There's a lot to speculate on this. There really is. <sighs> yeah. We haven't got a release date or anything right now, but I'll keep you posted. If you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, do the thing, hit all those buttons. Till next time. Goodbye, goodbye.
And goodbye again, people in the viewers.